Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It is September the 12th, we're looking at Psalms 16, 17 and 18. Now the Proverbs that we're looking at today, they come thick and fast and they seem to be very diverse. They don't seem to have a pattern to them as far as I can tell, but I'm sure that there's a pattern to them somewhere, it's just that I can't see it. I'm going to read some of the notable um, proverbs but I'm going to highlight certain proverbs which I have found over the years uh, to be absolutely outstanding and any one of them is my password for today so verse 1 verse six, chapter 16 verse 1 the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes but the Lord weigheth the spirits you see we need to be very careful about this it's <laughs> we all think we're right um, it says that all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes but the Lord weigheth the spirits you may think that you're right about everything but the Lord he's the one who weighs your thoughts he's the one who weighs your heart uh, there are just so many uh, uh, proverbs today that are significant, but I will just focus on the ones that are catching my eye at the moment. Verse 5, every one that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. In other words, that's two negatives. <laughs> he shall be punished. Uh, verse 6, but mercy and truth, iniquity by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Now in the Old Covenant, they did not all have the Holy Spirit in exactly the same way as, as Christian Church does. And so the only means that they had to um, live a righteous life was that they feared God. They feared God. And the fear of the Lord caused men to depart from evil they departed from evil because they were terrified terrified of the judgments of God now verse 7 <clears throat> you see some of these some of these phrases some of these proverbs are a tremendous encouragement some of them are a great sense of wisdom verse 7 when a man's ways please the Lord he maketh his enemies to be at peace with him isn't that true you know, sometimes when we feel as if we're right with the Lord and things are going right between us and the Lord, then even those that would be our enemies are at peace with us. See, this is the amazing thing. Verse 12, it is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. You know, oh, that presidents and kings and Prime Ministers would take notice of this, that um, that this is what, um, this is how a kingdom, this is how a government is established. It is, it is established by righteousness. Verse 13, righteous lips are the delight of kings and they love him that speaketh right. Verse 16, how much better it is to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather to be than chosen silver the highway of the upright is to depart from evil he that keepeth his way preserveth his soul verse 18 pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall people often quote this verse saying that pride goeth before a fall but that isn't what it says pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall he that handleth a matter wisely shall find good and whoso trusteth in the Lord happy is he see these are this grave phrases aren't they they're absolutely amazing let's, let's move on down verse 22 understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it but the instruction of fools is folly right the instruction of fools is folly. 
Now, <clears throat> it's not saying that the person that's instructing them is folly. What it's saying is that the instruction of fools is folly. In other words, when you instruct a fool, then the instruction that you give appears to be folly to him. And so therefore, it then becomes a foolish thing for a wise man to do. Instructing a fool is not a wise thing to do. They just do not appreciate it and they do not accept it. Verse 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now this is a proverb that we've had before. Very true. <clears throat> now verse 33. The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. See, Israel used lots all the time to help them to make um, decisions. And they believed that when they cast the lot into the lap, it was the Lord that uh, decided what the decision should be. So chapter 17, better is a dry morsel with quietness therewith than a house full of sacrifices with strife. How true. This should be written above our, our doors. As we come into the house, we should see that um, better a dry morsel with quietness therein than a house full of sacrifices with strife. You know, we don't need lots of apologies. We don't need lots of mending our ways. What we need is quietness in the first place. Verse 5. Whosoever mocketh the poor reproacheth his maker, and he that is glad at calamities shall not be unpunished. See, there's a double negative again. But what he's saying is that those who mock the poor, well, they're speaking against their maker. And he that is glad when at calamities, they will not go unpunished. You know, there's, certain, there's a certain wickedness in which men love it. They love it when calamities come. That's a wicked thing. That's a terrible, wicked thing. Verse 9. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separates very friends. People say, what does very friends mean? It means true friends. True friends. He that repeateth a matter separateth true friends. Wow, we need to be very careful. You know, if, you, if you've got wisdom at all, you don't share. You don't share people's troubles. You don't, t t you don't tell tales about people. No, no. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love. There we are. Um, <clears throat> verse 13 and 14. Whosoever rewardeth evil for good and evil, evil shall not depart from his house. The beginning of strife is as when letteth out water. Therefore, leave off contention before it be meddled with. Uh, good wise words. Don't get into contention. Leave off contention. Verse 15 is um, one of my passwords for today. He that justifieth the wicked and he that condemneth the just, even they both are an abomination to the Lord. He that justifieth the wicked and he that condemneth the just. You'll notice the two designations. See, it's not Christian and non-Christian. This is, this is the wicked and the just. And we're not to justify the wicked. We're not to declare the wicked righteous. And we're not to condemn the just. We're not to declare the just wicked. <clears throat> Uh, verse 17, a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. What does that mean? It means a friend is someone that will love you all the time. That's what a friend is. But a brother is born for the days when you have adversity. They will always stick close to you. He that loveth transgression... He loveth transgression that loveth strife. He that exalteth his gate seeketh destruction. He that hath a froward heart findeth no good. He that hath a perverse tongue falleth 
into mischief. Verse 22, another key password for me, a merry heart doth gird like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth up the bones. Um, I, I just love to laugh, and I think this is a real secret. All the great men or women that I've ever known have been people with a great spirit of laughter. Verse 27, he that hath knowledge spareth his words. A man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Wow. Verse 28, there's some very wise words. He, even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. If you want people to think that you're wise or a man of understanding, just say nothing. <laughs> Verse 5 of the next chapter, chapter 18. Um, it is not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. Right. Verse 9. He also that is slothful in his work is a brother to him that is a great waster. You see, the person that's slothful, he wastes his hours. The person that is a waster, he wastes his money. Verse 10, beautiful phrase. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. If you want to be safe, the name of the Lord is the place where you will find safety. Verse 13. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and a shame unto him. There we are. He that is first, verse 17, he that is first in his own cause seemeth just, but his neighbour cometh and searcheth him. You see. Verse 18, the lot causes contentions to cease and parteth between the mighty. You see, this is why lots were used for, to make difficult decisions. It's decisions in which both solutions would be acceptable. The best way to solve between two uh, decisions that are both acceptable is to cast a lot. And when a lot is cast, all the arguments must cease. Verse 19, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of of a castle. Oh, oh, how very true. When people are offended, it's like you shut them up into a strong city. Very difficult to get back into that city after that. Um, <clears throat> verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So be careful what you say because your tongue has the power of life and death. Verse 22. He are men. Proverb for you. Whoso findeth a wife. Findeth a good thing. And obtaineth favour of the Lord. Now he's not referring to the wife as being the thing. <laughs> he's referring to the marriage. As being the thing. That is good. And he obtaineth favour of the Lord. And then verse 24, you know, I have lots of people that say to me, I don't have many friends. Well, here's the verse for you. Verse 24, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Wow. Amazing. If you want to have lots of friends, then you need to learn to be friendly. Well, God bless you. These are amazing passages, aren't they? God bless you. Look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.